Good morning. It is early and I deep, deeply apologize. I can't talk right now. I'm still drinking coffee. Um, I deeply apologize for not providing a video last week and this week I'm afraid it's just not going to be anything major. Um, I do have a quick little update for you guys. So now that we are officially licensed, which I'm actually going to take you over here to show you what this looks like in Texas. Okay, so basically we have to have this hanging up. I'm going to get this framed. Um, but this is really important here in Texas. So we have to provide the ombudsman uh, information. This is for foster youth in our home. Um, so in the event that there's a child or teenager that's in a foster home, um, <clears throat> and I think the main headquarters, everything's in Austin, um, but if there is a, ch a foster child or a foster teenager in a foster home um, and they have a complaint about um, the foster family caring for them or if they have any concerns, so it says here, you know, then you call this, then they call this number, not you, the foster parent, but the foster child or teenager. And then um, that is our license. So that's got the state seal up there, all of our information, and then um, how many were um, approved for and so forth. And I mean, I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of that information there. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's, that is that. So basically the walkthrough um, process when you are licensed, um, and this depends on the state that you're with. In Texas, whether you're with Child Protective Services or with an agency, um, they will come in monthly. Um, when you are, I'm trying to think, they'll come in monthly when you don't have children. They will come in unannounced, which is, uh, it can be a little stressful. I'm having to, um, oh, sorry, my hand. <laughs> I'm having to create a new normal uh, as far as routine goes. Um, I will fully admit that my husband and I don't always make our bed. <laughs> and there are dishes in the sink. Um, so basically, I'm having to get into a new normal, whereas I have to make sure our bed is made. Uh, there's minimal dishes in the sink if any at all, and just kind of make sure things are tidy before I leave for the day when I go to work. Um, because when you're at work, you I mean, you could get a text saying, hey, I'm dropping by this evening, and the house could be a complete and total wreck. Now, because we don't have kids, there's kind of this um, unspoken assumption that, we, that our house should be just like, good to go. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know about that. So um, when when you have kids, their expectation does lower, but they still want to make sure that you're maintaining cleanliness, hygiene, um, just you're you're meeting the the minimum health standards that would be healthy for a home with children. So obviously they don't want a lot of food on the floor from you know kids, and it it's so hard to like because you're constantly cleaning when you have littles and when you have bigger kids it's a little bit different um so that's kind of why i enjoy having our dog atlas because he definitely helps when you have food fall on the floor <laughs> um so we had our walk through last week and that went really well um so our caseworker will probably be popping by any time this month uh, we also have to be ready for the state inspection. And what does that mean? So state inspectors, um, they are assigned to, or they're, they're kind of given a lottery of, of homes. And they just go randomly do an inspection on a foster or adoptive home. This is just to make sure you're still maintaining all minimum requirements that got you licensed. So your safety measures, your the health inspection, like you're, you're keeping your home clean and things of that nature. Um, water's running, lights are on. Basically, are you maintaining your life, you know? <laughs> It, you know, a lot of people make it such a big deal, but it really isn't. If you are warm and friendly and inviting to the people who come to your home, I will tell you after doing this for five years, um, guys, it really does help. 
it makes things go so much smoother. People like caseworkers and inspectors, they will, I mean, they won't be there as long. Especially if you were like, hey, come on in and yeah, sure, look around, I don't care. <laughs> Um, when you seem resistant, when you seem put off, even if it is a crazy, horrible, not so great day, when you, when you seem put off or annoyed or frustrated, it does not encourage them to be lenient when they see like a dirty dish or if they see a pile of laundry that needs to be done or something like that. So just keep that kind of as food for thought. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful, uh, happy Independence Day, uh, happy birthday, America. Um, and I, you know, other than that, I really don't have a whole lot going on this week. Um, I've not been feeling well and I'm starting to feel a little bit better because I'm on an antibiotic. So I'm a little disappointed because I was so excited that I went three whole months without, you know, with being antibiotic free. If many of you who are new and you don't know my health story, um, I think there are some videos back <laughs> that does kind of tell that. If not, um, leave a comment down below and I'll actually share that with you guys. It has been a very interesting year in my life. Um, so anyway, so I was just, I wasn't really feeling that great this week. It was kind of a rough week, um, but I'm glad that I'm feeling better or I'm starting to feel better now. Um, and that's just really nice. And it's kind of nice having a little bit of downtime from work and other responsibilities so I can rest and just let my body recoup and recover. Um, but other than that, I'm hoping next week um, I can take you guys on, I think the final home tour. I was gonna show you our computer area, but uh, <laughs> it is an absolute mess. But that's only because my dear, sweet, wonderful husband and all of his creativity uh, he is building, actually building, uh, a new desk for himself, which I think is just so cool. But unfortunately, when you have to build something new, the old stuff is like pushed off to the side. So it's like taking up a good portion of the room and it just, it looks like a, like a, like a workshop bomb. <laughs> and I know that's only temporary because I know like if we can't sell it, you know, we're gonna donate it or, or something, but um, it just looks crazy right now. <laughs> and like for our inspection last week, it looked amazing. It was like, oh, it was beautiful. We actually pulled that together like in, like, in one night. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Thank you so much for um, uh, just, you know, <laughs> being patient with me. I'm really glad several of you enjoyed uh, the live uh, video. My husband and I are hoping to do that once a month. Um, and we'll see how long that lasts, especially when we get a placement. Um, we have been told that our wait is going to be long because we are uh, waiting for a legal risk or an adopt only placement. So, you know, that can, that, that can be a while. So in the meantime, I will be talking to you guys more about foster care, um, pre-adoptive services, um, and a little bit about a project that I'm working on with my business that actually has to do with um, teaching parenting courses. I know, <laughs> it's a very big undertaking. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys again so much and I will see you guys next time.